Welcome back to the Tidy Grim Hanger. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for March 5th, 2023, 2023. Of course, we've got all kinds of Transformers news. Just a ton of stuff going on this week with Mainline, Legends, Masterpiece, all kinds of stuff. We've got some interesting McFarlane drops to talk about, and we get to see, finally, the Batmobile. We did get some in-hand images of Silverhawks and of some G.I. Joe, so some pretty cool stuff going on right there from Super 7 and what's going on with the Ultimates line. Pretty exciting. I did make a whole video about that, so I won't talk too much about it. Still kind of fun. There's some interesting stuff with Marvel Legends and with very little with Star Wars. Just to be truth, truthful and honest, not much going on Star Wars. But we'll talk about all of it coming up. All right, so starting out with some stuff at Show Z that's going on. We got a sale on this Sentinel Toys Ryobot Super Robot Wars OGR1 Real Personal Trooper. It's down from 210 to 170. Pretty cool overall figures. Includes a figure, the boosted rifle, revolver, uh, knife, shield, fist, open hands, all that kind of stuff. And it's only six inches tall, but it's made of plastic and die cast. Unique Toys Nero is on sale from 160 down to 144. This is the one that is the clear version. I believe it's only partially clear, not 100% clear, just by looking at this. But it is pretty cool, pretty interesting if you're in on this and missed out on the first go around or prefer to get the clear one. Flames Toys is making a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Dragon Zord. No price just yet, but this thing does look pretty interesting. I don't know much about Power Rangers at all. This thing's supposed to be due out in the fourth quarter of 2023. So Dragon Zord, is that a cool one? Probably. And I just like looking at cool stuff on Show Z. This is po Pose Toy Pose Plus Metal P Plus Zero Two DX. Baxinger and Baxin Bird DX set. Now this thing was like 520, they marked it down to 568 and then it almost immediately sold out. So uh, two items each, 11 and 16 uh, inches tall. I'm not sure if they're gonna get more in or not, but I thought this looked really cool. But I don't really know what it's from. Okay, starting out with some Masterpiece news, we have a company, Iron Warrior, making the IW07 leader. And this is an Optimus Prime from Transformers Prime. The thing is about it, They've already made the IW05, which was a smaller version of this, and now they're just making a bigger, more Masterpiece-esque one, kind of around the 10-inch range, and it's going to have die-cast and premium paint. It is non-transformable, highly articulated. It's going to sport LED eyes and a plethora of accessories, which include a pair of arm blades and arm blasters, two saber swords, silver and blue, and then swappable heads. So there's a lot going on with this thing. I understand the first one was pretty good, but it was a little small. This thing is going to be in line with Masterpiece scale, technically, or sort of, maybe a little bit too big for Masterpiece, but it does look pretty good if you're in this era of Transformers. Takara is making a Nemesis Prime of their Canon X project. I don't know where this fits. Is it Mainline? Is it whatever? It's Takara making it, so we're just going to call it Masterpiece. And it is supposed to be a functional camera and all that kind of stuff, so pretty cool, pretty interesting with that. We've already seen the first one come out, and now this is the Nemesis one, so really not much to see here. I find it really odd we're getting Beast Wars Takara teasers for repaints, and so with that, I'm wondering, are they going to fix the crotch on Megatron, or I don't know. I don't know, but I think it's really strange that we're not going to get a new character from them, we're just going to get repaints. Will the repaints fund a new character? I don't really think that's how Takara works. Uh, I think that they definitely were going to make plenty of money with their first release of any character they put out. So I'm not sure what's going on with this, where's the new characters from them, but these haven't been on the market in a while, and so I'm sure fans are going to want to get these, and then hopefully we get a new character from them. So Bumblebee is going to be made by Robosyn in a non-transforming state that looks very G1-esque, sort of. And the thing about this is that it's probably going to do all, all the kind of stuff that their Optimus Prime did. And I'm trying to look to see size and scale on it. I think it's going to be about 10 inches tall. Uh, that's not Masterpiece scale. That's way too big to be Masterpiece scale. But it would scale well with what they've already made. So I think that's kind of the, the way they're going with it. And it is going to be big. Probably pricey. I don't know the price. I was I would guess 300 but I'm probably way wrong. It's probably be 5 or something. But I'm guessing 300 but I'm curious what all it does, and I'm curious why they gave up the transforming gimmick 
or would it have been too hard to make this transform or what so I'm curious if they're going to go forward with any other characters that are going to transform. But it's very interesting. I was actually kind of shocked and surprised when I saw this. But I kind of look forward to seeing a video on what it does. So we got something that's coming our way from a Cyber Era Soundwave. I believe this to be Masterpiece scale. But I, I, I'm not 100% sure when it comes to what's going on with the movie characters. But I thought it looked pretty interesting. And the bot mode is looks a little short to my taste but the car mode looks amazing and I, I think that when it comes to the movie characters I think the car modes always look fantastic and there it goes kind of aligning with what it should look and I'm guessing they're making all these other things too so uh, not very much information about it actually almost no information just some pictures so far we'll see what happens going forward so it looks like fans hobby is going to be putting out a TFCon LA 2023 exclusive called the MB13B boss man and this is going to be limited to 600 pieces worldwide and it's going to be made just for tfcon los angeles of course there's going to be places that are going to have this i'm sure there'll be a few here and there if you're interested in getting it but pretty interesting pretty cool let's see the uh, alt mode here it is in the alt mode so it does look pretty cool overall and it's interesting i am not sure this i'm sure this mold was used for something else because they're not going to make the mold just for 600 units. It's a repaint of something, but I haven't picked any of these up from them so far, and uh, they all look pretty cool. And there it is. I believe that's his Target Master on the right there. So there's the box. There's the alt mode. There it is. And of course, Chosen Prime is involved with this. So pretty cool that they're making it, and that this is the exclusive. I'm not sure what other exclusives they'll have though. So another light masterpiece week, but we have TFCon coming, so we'll have a lot of information for that. I believe looking at this though this shocked me and also I want to praise Magic Square for this so Magic Square is making a slag this is a Dinobot this is going to be called what's the name of this thing I don't even see the name of it just yet but they showed an image of the grayscale version of their slag and it looks really good uh, fantastic now I hope they put a little paint on this thing and make it shine because the design is just that amazing. It looks that good. But the reason I think this is good that they're doing this is because New Age has already made a very nice Grimlock. And for them to just come out, if they put a Grimlock out, it's kind of a waste of time and counterproductive. Why not do this? Why not start dialing out a team, making characters that New Age isn't making? I love that idea. I love that they're doing it. And I hope it scales well with the Grimlock that they have so that between the two companies, we could dial out a nice team pretty fast. Then they can fight each other over... Uh, who does the best one later on? Here's the alt mode, and I think the alt mode looks fantastic. And so with that, Magic Square does good work. New Age does good work. I mean, between the two of them, we're going to have a nice set here. And that's very impressive. Now, I, I, the DX9 ones were not bad either. And so the McFans toys, uh, KO Oversize of those weren't bad either. But these are next level. So if, if you want to, uh, this might actually create a buying opportunity for the older McFans toys and DX9 stuff when people want to dump theirs and pick these up, but these do look better. Speaking of the New Age Grimlock, just so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like, well, they're actually putting out a battle damage one, so that's uh, up for order now, I guess. This is pretty interesting that they're putting out so many repaints of this guy. I'm curious what they're going to do next. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm very impressed with their... Grimlock, so I'm curious, you know, what's next, what's next on their list, their agenda, but here he is in his dino mode, and fantastic figure, so between two of these companies, great set, and you can continually keep picking up these ones for New Age, Magic Square's weird though, like, they'll put out one, maybe two, and then of the same mold, and then nothing for a long time, or nothing again, it's strange. Alright, so I'm gonna give you the easy name first, looks like a, a Metroplex, right? This is... Siang Culture YC001 Vladivostok. And so with that, I think I got all those words right. It looks like a pretty nice G1-esque legend scale version of Metroplex. And also, with it being the height it's going to be, which I think is about 18 inches, that would be, again, another Legends that would make a good G1 stand-in. Maybe you don't like the G1 version, or maybe you don't want to pay for a complete G1 version getting this guy, which I don't know how much it's going to be. Uh, Show Z does have this for $2 down. also has 
the slag from Magic Square for a dollar down pre-order. But this is pretty cool. Uh, it's big. No pictures of base mode and all that kind of stuff. Or no information. It's still very, very early. These are more or less teaser prototype pictures out there. Or may even just be a render. So, uh, very nice looking though. Uh, pretty good. Pretty impressive. And still, I don't have any more word on the Light Toys Masterpiece version Davis. But uh, I just see a lot of Metroplex love all over the place. Everywhere except for Hasbro for some reason. So MK Toys put out more pictures of their knockoff of what New Age did, and the more I look at it, the less I'm wanting it. it. It does look more like a cartoon version, but just if you compare it to what New Age did with the presentation and all that kind of stuff, that the only thing I'd really want from this one is the inside thigh covers, or not thighs, but lower leg covers, and it's got a lot of accessories and stuff to it, but uh, I don't know the price, so if it's really cheap, then yes, I'd be on board with it. But I don't know release date, and I, I haven't really seen it up for pre-order anywhere. I tried to look around and see if I could find it for pre-order. I just haven't. I don't see it on shows these just yet. So, curious, curious, curious when this will come out, when you can order it, but or what the price will be. Okay, so we've got pictures of Kang's Toys CY Mini 05. This is the miniature version, or the Legend Scale version, of their Predaking, and this is Thor Mini, and it's pretty cool that they are introducing those mini terms in there. This is oh five of their set looks pretty cool here's the alt mode of that figure and that does look pretty solid too and they pretty much know what they're doing they've already done it in the masterpiece they're just downsizing it and i'm sure they're changing uh, a bit as they go and here's the lineup of the team so far and I, they seem to be moving fast on this they're moving way faster on this one than they did with the masterpiece one but then again it seems like everything in legends moves a little bit faster doesn't it so here's something interesting, it's the Artisan keycaps, and uh, this is going to be officially licensed from Hasbro, so it just shows right here that you can just plug on your keys a face of Optimus Prime and Bumblebee, Megatron, Soundwave, and Starscream and all that kind of stuff, so pretty interesting, pretty cool, and it, it's kind of funny, I was at the bank the other day and they, they got all new keyboards that were all weird and strange and goofy looking and... Then we get these keycaps, like, a few days later. That's pretty cool. Pretty interesting. If you're into it, then, uh, keycaps from Clack Keys at clackkeys.com. Before we get into some mainline stuff, this is a Masterpiece custom torso that was completely redone to accommodate this, this RC. And it looks really good. And what they've done is eliminate the backpack and fix the chest. And basically do what cars have done in the first place so this is very impressive that uh this is accomplished and of course it's kind of fun of course you're starting with a base model that's already there and then just reworking it and making it into this i think it looks fantastic and kind of giving us much much closer to what in my mind an rc would look like now this picture was provided by uh was in stop motion was in stop motion but I'm assuming that that this person did it, but maybe they just took the pictures. I don't know, but it still looks really cool, and it's pretty exciting for what could possibly come in the future. So the biggest news in mainline Hasbro stuff is a Titan for 200 bucks. The Legacy Evolution Generation selects Guardian Robot and Lunar Tread. This is just pretty much a repaint of their Omega Spring. Now this is $200 now instead of I think it was 160 or 175 when it was Omega Supreme. I don't remember. I didn't buy that one. But it's up for pre-order everywhere. And I'm kind of curious how well it'll sell as though it's not a major character Omega Supreme. But it is still pretty cool. It was in the cartoon and all that kind of stuff. So it is interesting. And uh, that Omega Supreme, the price on that skyrocketed. Uh, doubled in price almost on the secondary market. So a lot of people probably wanting to get after this. Here's the alt mode and it still has a really long rocket. So uh, they're proud of that rocket. So there it is. And it's a long rocket and a short <laughs> runway, a short track there. But anyhow, there's also, uh, the reworked countdown into lunar tread. Anyway, um, is that what this one is? This one, the lunar tread. Anyhow, it looks pretty cool. Pretty interesting inclusion. Are you in on this set? So we got a picture of an Earth Spark Wave 2 Deluxe Optimus Prime, and it looks pretty cool. I still can't kind of get over the build a 
figure piece with a transformer. That just feels weird, but it is where we are with the Earth Spark, so that's it's cool if you're in on this kind of stuff. It's also interesting to see how much articulation that leg has, but this is the bot mode, and we also can see the alt mode of this. And in the alt mode, it looks a little weird, actually, a little, little wonky. It almost looks mistransformed, or like the back of it's not the same height on each side and all that kind of stuff. But but anyhow, this is our spark lower. I think it's a lower price point targeting the kiddos. So. There are pre-orders up for the Origins Jazz with the Cybertronian version of Jazz, Bum Buzzworthy Bumblebee version at Target and Hasbro Pulse right now. 25 bucks for this guy and pretty cool that they're doing him and I really feel like it's pretty much guaranteed now at this point that we'll get the Wheeljack. So uh, they haven't said it, but if they've already done him and the Bumblebee, why not? Wheeljack, because Wheeljack was actually in the show, so uh, looking forward to that also. But I'll, I do look forward to this, and I'm glad they're doing it with some Cybertronian modes that are real Cybertronian modes. So we got a real grainy photo of a Thundercracker reissue, which is cool. It was really cool. That looks so much like the cartoon in G1 toy form versus what we got before. But... Still, the original, of course, has its charm and all this kind of stuff, and it still has more or less the original parts and pieces that the G1 had. But, but I'm not seeing the Starscream sell hardly at all, and uh, and they're really hurting themselves with this closed box packaging. It would excite people to feel like they're buying something that's truly retro, and you completely lose the whole excitement and impulse buy with this packaging. And even I even looked at it and considered it at Walmart. I was like, nah, didn't do it for me. But even the Headmasters, I wasn't going to buy them because they're not really retro. The packaging sold me on the Headmasters. I mean, I have them already, the Headmasters. And the packaging sold me on the Headmasters. And so I hear Hasbro's going to be going back to plastic again, but it's, it hasn't been official. Okay, so we're hearing that we're going to be getting some more retro stuff and special edition so we're supposed to be getting a retro perceptor, as you can see in this picture here, and that's cool. What's it going to look like? That's interesting. Perceptor's not a, a, a relatively hard figure to get in the vintage line already. Anyway, I think that's something that they really need to think about. Is it a hard figure to get? Uh, is it a high demand figure? I mean, there's a nice balance between high demand and scarce and rare. Most of the high demand figures are actually figures that were already made in large quantities in the past, so they're still pretty easy to get. So he's really easy to get on the secondary market, so which kind of to me makes me wonder if it's a good choice. Shrapnel, I mean, any of the Insecticons, they've already been reissued multiple times. Uh, they had a Kmart set back in the day, but that was a stu stupid expensive, like 70 or 80 bucks for three of them. And then there's something called the Transformers Generations Fan Exclusive 2 Optimus Prime. Don't know anything about that, and I guess we'll find more going forward. Now, the rumor is that there's going to be a 6.5-inch Voyager class Optimus Prime and a 5.5-inch Deluxe Soundwave from the Rise video game inspired. And so, this reactivate. So, curious how that comes out, or we'll see pictures down the road and all that kind of stuff. Rumors are always fun, but it's even more fun to see pictures. There's also a sell right now on this Bumblebee and Stalker 2-pack with the AWE Striker for G.I. Joe. And it's down from 70 bucks to 55 bucks on Amazon.com. I'll try to get a link for that for you. The thing about this is that I really think this is an amazing mode in the AW Striker mode, and it should not have been Bumblebee. And I think that's one of the problems. But you do get a an O-ring carded stalker, which in my opinion is worth 20 bucks. So you're paying like 25 to get a really nice solid AWE striker, which I feel like because it transforms. It condenses down. It's even more heavy duty and stocky for Stalker than the G.I. Joe version. So that's just my thoughts on it. I don't have it yet, but I probably will bite if it gets any cheaper. Okay, transitioning to a bunch of other news. Ramen Toy is putting out this poll on their Facebook page about the Marshall. Now, if you don't know anything about the Marshall, the Marshall is going to look similar or somewhat like Brave Star, like Marshall Brave Star, and I think this thing looks fantastic. But they're asking what you want the vest to look like, and a lot of people just literally pulled up cartoon stills and said they want the vest to look like the cartoon. But you have the option here of the white with red stripe or the blue 
more or less blue with a an orangish yellowish stripe but I would like it to look as close to the animation I haven't analyzed every aspect of the animation but I still like what they got going on and the way they have it but I think the blue is closer to the animation in my opinion or would be the white one but where it's white it should be sort of that yellowish color that he wears anyhow go over to their Facebook page get involved if you're interested in this at all and throw your vote in the ring so going from Ramen Toy, which I love their Silverhawks, going into Super 7, we're starting to see their Silverhawks show up. Now, I've got all of them on the way, a couple of them first and then the rest of them later, but I'm excited for them, and there's there's a lot of kind of mixed emotions in the community about this. Now, I did put up this video a couple days ago talking about the in-hand images versus the renders. There's, there's now a video of someone unboxing them all. I think they look fun, but I still want hyper shiny back metalized looking toy versions i'm wondering if people get mad if they come back later and super 7 has them back metalized later but i have a feeling the ramen toy ones are going to be much much shinier than these and i mean the ones they already have are shinier but the titanium titans when they come out i think they'll be even shinier than what they've done before so uh with that depending on what you want this is going for a tune look to match the cartoon and i think they look really good but I, I did a whole video, so you can go check all those out, and it's just exciting. We're going to get these baddies. We're getting Wave 2 first. Before Wave 1, it's something that it's happened before with Super 7. But I think the reason is, and a lot of other people have been mentioning this, that they've had a lot of problems with how the paint looked on the samples and from Wave 1. And so maybe they're just doing this delay to make Wave 1 right. And if that's what they did, and Wave 1 comes in looking amazing then it was worth it. If they, Wave 1 comes in looking raunchy, then, then yeah, Super 7 is going to have a big problem on their hands. Speaking of Wave 1, Wave 1 of their Joes are hitting, and, and everyone seems to be liking them so far. Uh, well, the pictures at least. And I haven't seen any reviews yet, so I'm sure they'll be hitting fast and furious and hard and all that kind of stuff. But, but I think they look pretty good, and in some cases... Some look better than the renders, and in other cases, some don't look as good as the renders. But for the most part, not bad. Okay, since so I'm kind of going from Super 7 G.I. Joe to G.I. Joe Hasbro, the Pulse fan stream for it is going to occur on March 8th, What, whatever that is. That's three days. Wednesday? Sounds right. Wednesday sounds right. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to talk about, but pre-orders up for stuff that we've already been revealed in the past and so i'm sure that's going to happen and then past that some name only reveals maybe we'll see a figure that was a name only reveal before in digital and then the other ones that were digital will have a real figure maybe that's how it goes or i don't know and we'll probably get an update on the his tank again and told when it's going to come out and all that kind of stuff so kind of interesting update on my issue with the sky striker though uh i did have to send my ace in and i'm just waiting to get an ace and I'm prepared to I might have to buy another one off eBay if they don't send it to me I, I don't know what's gonna happen in that situation not really very happy I got two sky strikers I said I'm gonna live with all the damage from all the cards except for one and they still made me send it back which sucks and BBTS helped me out and took care of me BBTS took care of me on my crush stuff from my thunder tank crushing stuff but whatever so the Proline has some 10 inch statues coming out, which I'm not too into those, but I think it looks fantastic. I'm just not into the statue game at all. And I did pick up a Serpentor statue though. That was pretty cool. This is very nice. It's a bigger statue, so it really won't even fit in with your stuff. I don't know why. Why not make the statue that fits in with the stuff that you have? I don't know. Maybe they just have to do that a little bit different, but it looks good. Flash, and it's all surrounding this Flash movie. And so what I'm hearing is Flash movie is going to be a, a reboot of DC. Is that what's really going to happen? The whole DC universe get rebooted to a multiverse? I don't know. We'll see. I haven't watched it, obviously, but whenever it comes out, I guess I'll give it a shot. But uh, let's see what really cool stuff's coming. This is a Hush Superman from McFarlane Toys. So this is not a statue. It actually has movable limbs and stuff. But I'm really satisfied with their first Superman that they put out. I think that this one looks good also, except the head. The head looks cartoony and what what was described as stylized and i also think that all the pin joints are a little off-putting on this guy i gotta i guess I should check my spider-man and my batman that first i don't remember 
like crazy amounts of giant pin joints. But anyway, uh, that still does look pretty good aside from that. Now they did reveal what their Batmobile is going to look like. The $80 1 12th scale for 6 inch figures or 7 inch. Technically 7 inch figures should be fitting in this thing. So with that, I think it looks weird. Not the whole thing, just the cockpit slash windshield and all of that. And so I'm my understanding is because it's made to be a one seater instead of a two seater, which I don't understand why. But obviously they're making it eighty bucks. It looks cool overall, but man, they should have got that cockpit right. And that that just my eye goes right to it. And I'm like, that's weird. But everything else looks amazing on it. So uh, again, this is the only picture, and I hate it when you only get one picture and you want to see every aspect of this thing so probably next week we get 15 pictures and and i'll probably like it more when i can see it from different angles but don't get me wrong i'm buying it so we got week one of the holothon on un, underway or gone through or whatever i did go on a road trip i did find a couple of small things for the holothon i did find a that bot that police officer bought, whatever, and I actually saw quite a few things, I just didn't pick them up. 60 bucks each, I should have got the female ninja and Heroku, well, I don't know how to say his name, but uh, I don't know these characters. And the Ray Filet looks cool, and so I was thinking about picking him up. Uh, I don't remember if I saw Rocksteady and Bebop, but the thing is they did put these up on Target to order, I'm sure they'll come up again. The accessory set with the small turtles, those are the ones that sold out super fast. And I didn't see any of that in the wild, so uh, I might go on a road trip again. What I found my luck with this is going on a road trip a week, two weeks, three weeks into it, more stuff shows up, and so with that, it's more advantageous to go later. There's everybody that wants it is getting it right away, and then they kind of get tired of it, and then more comes, and there's less competition. So there's the Marvel Legends animated Doc Ock and Aunt May 2-pack. Now here's... Here's the thing, I don't generally buy anything that's closed box packaging and when it comes to Marvel I only really buy it if it's in the store and I'm like oh that's really cool but I've bought now like eight or nine of these so why not go in on this one. It is fifty something dollars like fifty three dollars plus tax. I think mine is going to be fifty seven shipped because I have that whatever premium for now and so might as well take advantage of that. The cool thing is is that if I pre-ordered it while I still have premium. If I don't have premium when it comes in, they're still going to give me the free shipping, I believe. I think that's how it works. But but I'm going to get one set and check it out. That'd be kind of cool. But if it's close by, it's going to suck. Because everything else that's retro has see-through packaging. I haven't seen the packaging yet. Oh, wait. I just scrolled down. It's in VHS-looking packaging. I guess packaging's not really that bad, but I prefer the ability to see the figure. Okay, so... I guess I should talk about this in the McFarlane section, but McFarlane has some Multiverse Winter Teasers showcase, and it's got a Nightfall Batman. This is an awesome looking Batman. I don't know how many Batmans that they've had, they've made, but this one takes a cake. He looks mean and with no pupils in there. I mean, is there a soul? Same thing with this one here, and this one is, the, what are they called? Tim Drake? Uh, Tim Drake Robin and a reborn action figure now they don't have any information about buying it yet but the, the pictures are sweet they look good both of these look good and i like super ultra classic designs and this is in my opinion the best modern interpretation of a classic design for both these characters all right so getting into masterpiece masterpiece masters of the universe news they're not masterpieces some of them are so all this stuff seemed to be showing up at the online retailers, of course, not in stores, but uh, either a pre-order that comes up and sells out in five minutes, or the Master, oddly enough, the Master First stuff, there's plenty of it, and the Origin sells out instantaneously, and then that's crazy. So, with this, the Shadow Weaver, and the Sorceress, and the Pig Head, I, I'm already getting those shipped to me, and then the rest of the stuff is like pre-order down the road will come in, and I think I got the Skeletor, I already have the Skeletor. But the rest of it's coming down the road as pre-orders. But uh, interesting how they spring some stuff on us and then they already have it ready to ship. A couple weeks later, it's strange. Uh, the Sorceress does look amazing though. And so I can't wait to get her in and check her out and all that kind of stuff. 
but but with that a lot of this feels like the end of the line so maybe Nightlick was right all right so we've got a Skeletor in a Beast Man mask 50 bucks each uh, this is kind of cool I, they had something like this up I don't know if it's the same stuff as NECA and you can get it at Entertainment Earth so I'm not sure what's going on with this if it's one of those things because I thought they sold out when they had them on the NECA store so did Entertainment Earth buy a large stock or commit to buying a large stock so they could sell them uh, 50 bucks per mask is a little steep but still not bad overall so if you're in on this, uh, you can go get them over at Entertainment Earth. Another huge story going on this week is the story behind Funko Pops. Now, I first heard about this from Michael French retro blasting on a live stream. Really thought he would tear into Funko Pops, but he just basically explained the rise and fall of these kinds of things. They overcharge for it, they make way too many, and all that kind of stuff kind of like Beanie Babies, and I was like, man, I really thought Michael French would just have a heyday with this, but he didn't. He was real analytical of it, but uh, the thing is, is that they're paying more money to store this than, than it's generating them in revenue, and so they either are going to dispose of them, like bury them in a landfill, burn them, or whatever, but it's interesting, too, because there's more information about this, as in 246 million dollars worth of product that is sitting as as end inventory and uh, over on Star Wars site on Jedi Temple Archives they pointed out that Hasbro's got similar same issues Hasbro actually has bigger issues Funko's on 2.246 million Hasbro's sitting on almost 700 million at the end of the year so worth of inventory so they've got the same issues they're dealing with the same issues so all the companies are dealing with the same issues the only thing is, is there a higher demand for Funko Pops or Hasbro product? Who knows? So it was kind of confusing because Big Bad Toy Store has their own line of action figures, the Guardian of Antiquity, and this is from Invicta Toys. But you're getting Roman, Greeks, and Egyptians, and such as Hyades, Akkadens, and uh, Babylonians. I like the guy in the middle. The most i think it looks pretty cool these figures are 40 bucks six inch scale and you can get them at bbts and they look good they look really good okay so wrapping it up not much star wars news but this is a picture of showing retro and vintage collection stuff from toy hideout things that are on the way and in the works and all that kind of stuff that somehow they got it before we did and it's kind of cool i like that that was that wave three retro on the bottom right Okay, so we got these Ned B2 pack, and it's kind of cool. It's 75 bucks, and uh, when you could probably get the Ned B by itself from Target on clearance for like $10 soon, they want 75 for this 2 pack, so that's kind of crazy in my opinion. Can't even see the figure, I mean, can't see the figure on the Target one, but uh, 75 bucks for two figures. Amazon exclusive, crazy. We're seeing the beginning of the markdowns for good old Target and their Black Series. And so with that, I, I'm not surprised. Every time they have their exclusives, they get marked way down after a short period of time, just a couple of few months. So uh, I do like that they're aggressive with markdowns and get the product out of there and get new product in. But how long are they going to keep doing this? Like, how long are they going to keep carrying Star Wars product just to sell it at a steep clearance? This is nothing compared to where it's going to go, where they have to take it. To under 10 bucks. The last ones went to seven dollars. Amazon has the Bobo Fett Black Series 40th anniversary, and yeah, I did pick this one up actually, by the way. And now it's 23 dollars at Amazon. Crazy. I got some sort of a deal. I don't think I got it as cheap as 23 dollars though. I think it was 34, and then I got something off of it. But this, you know, it's bad if you can't sell Boba Fett at regular price. Uh, maybe you just sold too many Boba Fetts already. All right, so Mando season three. Is it season three or three, four? I think it's season three. Anyway, I watched the first episode of the new season with my family, and I have to say that I enjoyed it. It had a lot of action in it. It, it wasn't a waste of time. It was pretty decent. But I'll have to say that I avoid all the other reviews and stuff until I watch it, and a good point was brought up. There's really no product reveals surrounding it or really nothing to 
correlate with it. Back in the day, a movie comes out, there's tons and tons of product building up to a movie. The TV series comes out, and there's absolutely nothing. There's absolutely nothing for the TV series, which it's sort of a problem because they get product out months after the series is over, and the hype is gone. Anyway, I'm going to call it on the news because uh, there's so much to talk about, and I don't even think I covered it all, but we'll be back with more news next week or if anything major happens in the middle of the week. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe to Deer Hanger out.